Their position is that they're looking into it, that they're gathering information, that this is still really new, and that they don't have a lot of information. It's a federal investigation going on. You have Otani's attorneys saying they're going to the authorities, but they have not identified which authorities they're going to. Ken Rosenthal joining us right now, fresh off his first Fair Territory Live, which I watched and loved, and we introduced his co-host on that edition of the show, Alana Rizzo. Ken, great to see you, and congratulations on the expansion of the show and the addition to the show. It was really, really fun to watch both of you go back and forth. Thanks, and it's great to have Alana working with her again. I work with her at the network a little bit. We never were together all that much, but... Her voice is a good voice to have on any show. She's knowledgeable. She's experienced. She knows the game really well. And to go back and forth on some of the issues that are going on with her is really cool. So I enjoyed it. We had a lot to tackle yesterday. It was insane for March 20th or wherever we are, uh, March 22nd now. But that's the way the game is sometimes. And it's been a little bit hectic lately, put it that way. Yeah, a lot of heavy drama yesterday. So if you want to catch any of that, obviously it's up there wherever you get your pods, YouTube, etc. Let's push it forward because the latest news is J.D. Martinez signing up with the New York Mets. So what did you think of the deal for the player and for the team? I liked it for the team a lot. I thought the Mets needed one more bat at least and needed some protection for Alonzo. I know statistical analysts sometimes say protection is overrated and all of that, but If they want to look at it that way, that's fine. Let's just say they needed one more big bat. And J.D. Martinez certainly is that. He was hurt a little bit last year. Age obviously is a concern, but he is, when healthy, one of the great students of the game and a guy who continues to crush the ball. From the team's perspective, okay, so I like it. From the player's perspective, I must say I have to like it as well, especially given where we are in the calendar And some of the deals other people are signing, Michael Lorenzen, who is not J.D. Martinez, I understand that, but he got four and a half million. And you look at some of the infielders who have signed, even some of the outfielders, like Adam Duvall, three million. Is J.D. Martinez 12 million and Adam Duvall three? I'm not so sure, but that is the way it played out. So good for him for getting a raise on what he earned last year. He did take a $10 million deal last year with the Dodgers. And good for him as well. We want to see J.D. hit. I mean, this guy is one of the more fun players to watch approach the pitcher and just do what he does in the box. So it was good news. It was cool to see. And for the Mets fans, I know what Todd was saying about them being pessimistic, but this should give them a little bit more optimism. This is a little bit of a move in the right direction. Would Michael Lorenzen signing for the Mets have made him push more in the right direction? Because it seems like their lineup, we were talking about before, their lineup is pretty stacked. Would a Lorenzen fair market value, because we just had Michael on and he just wanted a fair market price, that's what he was looking for. Would that have helped the Mets more? Couldn't have hurt, but I don't know that it would have helped them more because I don't necessarily see their lineup, Eric, as, as dangerous as maybe you just thought or said right there. They've got Lindor, they've got Nimmo, they've got Alonzo, Marte may be healthy, but they're not, in my view, that powerful a lineup. So J.D. kind of helps them along those lines. And I know Alvarez is coming and McNeil is a good hitter when he's there, but I wanted to see a little bit more offense. So in my opinion, going to J.D. Martinez rather than going with Vientos and Mobati's going to play third base now and just mix it up that way, just go with the kids. For a team that claims it's still competing for a playoff spot, You go get J.D. Martinez. Maybe you get Michael Lorenzen too, but they're not in that mode right now. All right. The biggest story right now in baseball is something that, for some reason, baseball's not giving us much information. And I feel like the whole Otani situation and Ipe, his translator, how, how do we navigate through this? I read your article. I tried to read it twice because there's so much good information in it. But how do we navigate this in the sense of is MLB moving fast enough or are they moving at the pace that they should in these situations? Because we know this didn't just come up yesterday. This was something that I think you said January they started to hear about this or am I incorrect on that? No, I didn't say that. And I'm not sure when exactly MLB started hearing about it. 
my understanding is that they received some media inquiries probably this week. And that okay, is okay. when they heard about it. Now, to get to what Andy McCullough and I wrote today, we basically threw out some unanswered questions. And I think there was six in our article. Probably could have been 60, right? There's so <laughs> much that is not known here and so much we need to know. Now, as to the question of what MLB should be doing and should they be opening an investigation right now? I asked that question of a league spokesperson yesterday and their position is that they're looking into it, that they're gathering information, that this is still really new and that they don't have a lot of information. It's a federal investigation going on. You have Otani's attorneys saying they're going to the authorities, but they have not identified which authorities they're going to. So baseball is biding its time. At the same time, we have his interpreter, Otani's interpreter, essentially saying in his first version of this story, the one he told to ESPN, that Otani was paying off debts to him, for him, to an illegal bookmaker. That raises questions, right? Big questions. And the story is Otani was not involved. Okay, fine. But I would think baseball would want to get to the bottom of that story, would want to know if Ipe Muzuhara was indeed betting on just other sports or was he betting on baseball too? Are we going to take his word? He just changed his story within a span of 24 hours. So there are all these questions and baseball gets a little bit tentative and bristles sometimes at the criticism of not acting quickly enough. But in my view, they sort of need to act more quickly here. They sort of need to kind of send a message that they're going to be involved here. Now they're saying, Hey, listen, we're, we're getting there. We're not there yet. We have to follow the proper procedures and all that. I get it, but people are going to be really curious about what happened here. And baseball is seemingly taking the side of, uh, it was massive theft. He's a victim. So why should we investigate him? I understand that if that was the only side of this story, it's not the only side of this story. The other side is that Otani was involved in paying off Mizuhara's debts to an illegal bookmaker. Something that I learned yesterday from other media reports is basically illegal. Now, I don't know that he would be prosecuted for it. Prosecutors aren't necessarily going to go after him for that. But at the same time, it is against federal law to wire or transfer funds to an illegal bookmaking operation. So there is are a lot of unanswered questions here, a ton, more than I can even think of. And we tried to answer a few, but this thing is not going away and it's troubling. Even if Otani is completely innocent here, innocent of any wrongdoing at all, he didn't bet on baseball, he just was trying to help a friend, however you want to frame it, you still want to know more. You still want to know exactly what happened. And at some point, baseball is going to have to look at it in that fashion. Without a doubt. I mean, when you talk about unanswered questions, I would say red flags. I mean, you think about the money, how much money was involved. Um, I don't want to be misquoted. Something like, what was it, a million, millions of dollars? I think $4.5 million. Was I, am I right on that? That's right. Yes. That, that's, that's one red flag. It's not like we're talking $4,500. Number two, you can't gamble in California. That's just law. Um, where did they can't do it? Can't gamble with There's illegal bookmakers. It can't gamble with illegal sports, bookmakers right. in, in California. Um, there's a lot to unfold here. And I know you've been talking about it. Uh, it kind of led to what I was going to say, but this isn't going away anytime soon. I mean, you think about the people in the past that have gotten caught up in gambling um, and all this type of stuff. This is one of the most, you think you talk about steroids, this gambling is, is, is right behind it because there's been some high naming people involved. So this is something, in my opinion, that's not going to go away. Should it go away? No, this has to get done. And I, I just don't know what the next steps will be, Ken. So it's, it's something where we're sitting on their toe, hands and feet waiting to see what happens here to probably the most prolific baseball player we might ever see play the game. Actually, Todd, you make some great points there. One, let's be clear on this. Sports gambling is legal in... 32, 38 states, I'm sorry, 38 states you're allowed to bet on sports. California is not one of them. So that's a media problem yeah. for Mizuhara, right? The other thing that you said that is definitely noteworthy is where or how gambling is looked at by Major League Baseball. 
it is not behind steroids, I would say. It is number one as far as cardinal sins. Betting on baseball, that is. You're allowed to bet on other sports. This is complicated. We addressed it in the article. And I, I know fans get confused by this. We get confused by this in the yeah. media. <clears throat> Players employees, club officials, you can bet on other sports as long as you're doing it in states that are legal. You can have your NCAA pool. You can have your fantasy football leagues and all that, and nobody discourages that. And There's money spent in clubhouses, not $4.5 million, but you guys get after it. So that's okay. But betting on baseball, that's numero uno no. Now, Mizuhara says he didn't. Okay, I'd like to know more about that. And... The issue here is actually bigger than anything we're talking about. We have a sport, and not just the only professional sports league, that is partnering with gambling companies. We partner at foul territory and fair territory with gambling companies. The Athletic, for a time, partnered with gambling companies. Everyone seems to partner with gambling companies. Why? Because there's money in it, a lot of money. Now, what's the flip side? And this is the last thing we addressed in the article. The flip side is when you encourage this environment, or at least be part of it in a sense, when states legalize sports gambling, it is not exactly a shock that episodes like this will occur, right? Things are going to happen. Now, things happened even before this all got legalized, but the odds of it happening now are greater. The odds of a player of of Tani's stature being involved are greater. And even if he is not involved in the sense that he is gambling, he's involved because this guy is his friend and interpreter. So I don't know where baseball or any other sports league should draw the line here. They're not going to draw the line, obviously. The question we asked at the end of the article is what level of embarrassment will each league accept in order to take that money? And that is a big question. My last question on this, do you think now more than ever, one, Otani needs to talk more now to the media, let it be known a little bit, and will he all of a sudden come out and just be this guy that's like, you know what, Let's, let me get on the mic and talk to some people here because I feel like it's one of those things where eventually he's going to have to talk. Do I think he needs to? I, I think he needs to address it too as well, you know, as we get further. I don't think he needs to address it today, but I, I think it's where it's one of those things where he's going to have to come out of his shell and explain to everybody. Todd, that's something all of us would like, but yeah. there is a federal investigation going on into this gambling operation run by this person in California. Mizuhara yep. was betting with that person. And there is not a chance Otani is going to talk while this is all pending, I would say. I, I would be shocked if he talked. And Eric and you, Todd, and all the other guys on our show, they've never been involved or you've never been involved in federal investigations. So you've never had to clam up like that. But generally speaking, this is what happens. I'm not surprised at all. And no. the fact that he doesn't talk much or he talks on his schedule – that's okay. Nobody really cares about that. Fans don't care. Yeah. We'd like him to talk more. He talks when, when he wants to talk. Always, you as media, we want guys to share what they're thinking, share their thoughts, share things about certain plays, whatever. But in this circumstance, it's a little too serious, I guess you'd say. And yeah. he can't jeopardize himself in any way. You hit on it. You hit on it that we're in a different landscape of gambling. Do you think MLB and maybe even sports in general need to tighten up their bylaws, not change their bylaws? I get it. You don't ever want anybody gambling on the sport that they're playing. That is corrupt. That is disingenuous. That, you know, that is bottom line. Can't happen. But do they, you think they need to tighten this up because of the world we live in that was five years ago? We didn't live in this world with, with professional sports. It's a great question, Eric. I don't know that I have a good answer. So let's say you're a player, a baseball player right now, a major leaguer, a member of the union, and you're told by the league, nah, you can't bet on sports through DraftKings in a state where it's legal or FanDuel or BetMGM or any of these companies. I don't know, one, if you could even trace that. Guys have multiple phones and do all kinds of things. And I don't know that that's even the right thing to do. So 
it's out of the bag, right? It's just <laughs> the train has left the station. And I don't know <laughs> beyond the rules that are currently in place, which of course need to be enforced, that any of these leagues is going to take a harder line or look at its regulations in a more serious way because they have regulations. They have rules against whatever you want to, however you want to put it, illegal sports gambling, however you want to describe it. There are rules in place. They are enforced to the extent that the leagues can enforce them. I just don't know that they're going to get any tighter. I see this super differently on that front with what Kratz said, just coming from a world where most of my friends have been betting on sports for decades. And I was, I even asked the commissioner this once, um, probably about eight, nine years ago before it was obviously getting passed in most states. I was like, when are they going to legalize it? Because I was like, my friends get in the hole with, with bad guys. And I was like, and if it's regulated, that can't happen. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work the same way. You don't bet on credit like that and suddenly owe millions of dollars. And also if someone's doing something shady, the books regulate it all and they can actually catch if someone's doing something wrong. So I've been on that side of God, things I like, you. you know, people I hear you. I bet responsibly, wondering. drink responsibly, et cetera. You know, like I think no, that's regulating it has actually helped. Okay. But I just don't know how you'd stop it. And I don't know that it, it would just work the way we would think it would work. And there's so much out there. There are so many ways to gamble. I, I just don't know how you stop that. That's all. I don't disagree with you. And I'd like to see no player get involved in something like this because there are people, and Ipe Mizuhara apparently was one of them, that get sucked into this. And obviously they become compulsive gamblers and it's a sickness, a disease, like being an alcoholic, right? That's what we've learned over the years. It's hard to relate to and it's shocking to me that Mizuhara, from what I know of him, and I've had quite a few dealings with him, would be in this particular situation but i've had friends too scott that i never imagined would become compulsive gamblers and they have so it's a real thing and my point is when you get in partnership with these companies when you basically approve of what this is you're going to have situations man and they're not going to always be pretty yeah, I just the the betting on credit thing, where obviously someone yeah. who's doing something and running a book—that's what gets wild. I've seen it many times as a as a Jersey guy. Let's put it that way. Uh, one, one more on this, actually, on the league side, because your colleague Evan Drellick obviously covers some some heavy hitting t topics within the league for years, right? Just like you. So this one stood out to me. He said, in regards to your article with Andy McCullough, my two cents. It's stunning that Major League Baseball and Rob Manfred have a department of investigations and the league did not immediately announce DOI was being deployed to investigate all of it. Just a brutal look for the league's credibility on gambling and integrity. And also he responded to one fan comment that said there's you know, an investigation going on with the feds and that MLB has always let them do that first. But he said, people keep saying this as though MLB couldn't do what it has done so many times before. Announce mm -hmm. a formal investigation and then yes, wait on feds to complete it if need be. But the idea that an MLB inquiry can't be simply announced while the feds are looking into it, please. Those were his words. Evan's not wrong. And as a staff, we were going back and forth on this yesterday and just how to handle it. Whether to basically have a separate column saying just what Evan said or to make it part of the questions the way we outlined them, Andy and I. And we chose the, way we, the route we did. And I knew Evan had the opinion he did. He was very vocal about it in our conversations. And the tweet re reflects his feelings. And I'm not sure he's wrong, guys. There's nothing to stop the league from saying right now, we can investigate. We're going to investigate. We plan to investigate regardless of anything else going on. And it raises the question. We point this out in the article. When you don't do that, when you kind of pull back, it raises the question, okay, are you really going to look into this or are you going to shy away from investigating the golden child, the cash magnet, the <laughs> unicorn, the guy who is essentially the centerpiece of the sport? And that's a question the league is going to have to deal with. And if they're truly concerned, as Evan said, about their integrity, they will treat this as they would treat any player in this circumstance. Ken, you're on the ball, bro, and that's why we love you. Good stuff. I'm going to switch gears here for you, give you a little easier question. I wrote down here on my notes, <laughs> Stanton surge. So we're talking about Giancarlo Stanton. He hit three home runs the other day. 
He looks great. Um, is this just a little inkling of what we're going to see this year, you think? Or do you think it's, you know, uh, it's good for Stanton, but let's not let's not hold our breath here. What do you think uh, Giancarlo's got, got in the bag here this year for the Yankees? It's a great question. And number one, Todd, I want to see him stay healthy. If he stays healthy, he's going to do some good things. And the problem has been he has not stayed healthy. Did some different things in the offseason. Obviously trimmed down. This guy's got an amazing physique with the weight, without the weight, whatever. But that's not what necessarily wins baseball games. He seems to have done some things that will put him in better position as a baseball player. And that's something he needed to do. And the one thing about Stanton, I know Yankee fans get down on him on occasion and understandably given his performance. But his comments at the end of the season, when he basically said, what I'm doing is unacceptable. I've got to get better. Those are the kinds of comments I would think most fans want to hear. And he went out and did something about it. Now, how it all plays out, we'll see. But this is a guy who cares. This is a guy who wants to be great again. And I don't want to come off sounding like an apologist for Giancarlo Stanton. But if you're looking at this objectively as a fan out there and you see what he said and you see what he did, he obviously is trying. And we'll see where it goes. Guy's one of the great physical talents in the game. We know that. He's been a good citizen. There's never been any problems with him. And he's a guy that I think is pretty easy to root for, actually. I like it. Let's see what happens with him. Hey, we're uh, less than a week away from the season. Ken, good to see you again. Thank you for uh, getting into this. I think a lot of people really are looking for more information. A lot of places obviously are not covering it, but there are great articles on that front in addition to what we just talked about. So um, if you want to learn more about Otani's situation, check out Ken's article that he released today with Andy McCullough. And Ken, we'll talk to you next week, opening week of the season for everyone else. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.